Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Shut up, Bartimaeus, <laughs> the crowd said. Son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus, shut up. Call him here, Jesus said. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up. He is calling you. When we read the Gospels, I think we often approach them as, How would we have acted in similar circumstances? How would we have acted if we were Jesus, dealing with all those around him? How would we have acted in the story if we were the ones asking for healing? Now I ask, how would I have acted as part of the crowd surrounding Jesus and walking along with him? The Gospel today from Mark is the end of the second act, the act of traveling to Jerusalem. The second act ends like it started at least as who is being healed. In the beginning of Act 2, a blind man is taken in secret to be healed in sort of a strained <coughs> act of mud and spit in the eyes. But here at the end of Act 2, we have a blind man being healed in public just by his profession of faith that Jesus can do something for him. Jesus certainly has nothing to hide now. He is on his way to Jerusalem, and he knows he is facing death there. What healing he did in secret, and ordering those who he healed and the demons that recognized him to tell no one, that is now not necessary. And this is his last act of healing in Mark. Jesus has taught the disciples, and they will soon be tested in their understanding. Testing is learning, too. Jesus is letting the world know who he is and what his mission is <coughs> as he approaches the lifting of the cross. But what about those crowds? I am intrigued by the crowd following Jesus to Jerusalem. And I'm not the only one intrigued by them. The Pharisees were concerned much about the crowds. More than once the crowds had stopped the authorities from doing harm to Jesus. The young rich man appeared out of the crowds when he asked Jesus, What must I do to inherit eternal life? The young rich man became blind and deaf to what Jesus said to him. But here we have Bartimaeus, a poor blind beggar, sitting on the side of the road doing what he does best, begging. He wasn't really part of the crowd. He was being passed by by the crowd, as usual. When have you been passed by, by the crowd? Come on, I know you have been passed by. I mean, when have you been ignored, or maybe even worse, when have you been coerced by the crowd to blend in, to disappear? <coughs> Bartimaeus was expected to be invisible, to know his place, and his place, as the crowd saw it, wasn't talking to the good teacher. An 18th century French psychologist, Gustave Le Bon, espoused in his theory of crowd psychology that crowds are anonymous individuals and therefore generate emotion. Sigmund Freud said crowds have their own mentality. The individual minds come together to form one mind of the crowd. Well, today those arguments are being challenged by the convergence theory. 
that like-minded individuals come together to act in a like way. The crowd following Jesus seems to be excited about him. Of course, in their excitement, they were very quick to shut Bartimaeus down, but just as quick to get him to Jesus once Jesus made it clear that he would listen to Bartimaeus. I will use a highly technical term to describe this crowd. Fickle. <laughs> the crowd was fickle. And the crowd remains fickle. And we have see nothing yet. Wait until we hear the crowds at Jesus' trial in Jerusalem. Now I ask you to remember when you have been shut down by a crowd. Now I ask you, when have you been part of a crowd that shut someone down? Like most things in life, it works both ways. Jesus, the teacher, did something with and to the crowd. He made it his business to listen and act as individuals. Something that we all must do when we're in or around crowds. Especially like-minded crowds. Now most of us have been in a TSA line the airport, which is nothing more than a well-organized crowd. The crowd's objective in that line is to get through the security check without slowing down. And woe unto anyone that slows us down. <laughs> woe to anyone that doesn't remove their change out of their pockets, or take off their shoes, or remove their laptops from their cases. The crowd will, at the least, stare you down if you slow it down. But here's what Jesus did, and I'm not specifically advocating that you do this in a TSA line, <laughs> unless you feel called to do it. <laughs> unless someone is in need. Jesus stood still in the midst of the crowd. And listen to that voice of a nobody. That nobody who was the only one healed, according to Mark, who was given a name, Bar Timaeus, son of Timaeus, possibly a Gentile, crying, crying out for mercy. Jesus stood still, breaking from the crowd, heard the cry for mercy, and then asked, What can I do for you? No assumptions of what Bartimaeus needed because he was blind and a beggar was made. No assumptions were made about his health status, about his socioeconomic status. No assumptions that Jesus knew what was best for him. No assumptions about what he did with the sight that he had been given once before. No assumptions about what body type he wanted, about his race, about his sexual orientation, about his gender identity. No assumption that he was ugly and wanted to be beautiful. What do you want me to do for you? Asked Jesus, the Bartimaeus. My teacher, let me see again said blind Bartimaeus. Well, right now you may be saying, well, that was pretty obvious. Maybe. <coughs> Most of the time when I'm stopped on the street by someone approaching me from the edge, from the margins, from under the trees, approaching me as I walk in a crowd trying, not to, blend, trying to blend in and not be seen, my assumption is that that person approaching me needs money. And most of the time, I am correct. But there are those times, and it's happened more than once, when the person says, Father, 
pray for me. That makes me stop and pray for them and for myself. And makes me wonder, would I have heard Bartimaeus' call from the margins? Here's a prayer of Bartimaeus I offer you. Lord Jesus Christ, let us see again, or for the first time, with our hearts. Let us see our journey mates through eyes like that of a joyous child. Let us approach one another in fear, not in fear, but in vulnerability. Allow us to look at the obvious and see the hidden. Allow us to look to the edges. What we have against our brothers and sisters help us to cast it aside whether it's very, very real or very, very imagined. What we receive in baptism and what we receive in the gift of your body and blood, let us remember blind Bartimaeus' cry as he casts off his old mantle. Son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. Amen. Amen.